On Friday, March 11, 2011, at 2.46 p.m. Japan Standard Time, a magnitude 9.0 undersea megathrust earthquake struck off the east coast of Japan. One of the most tremendous earthquakes ever recorded, it triggered powerful tsunami waves that reached heights of up to 133 feet and traveled up to six miles inland. When the earthquake struck, I'd driven down to a small fishing village, uh, maybe 30 or 40 miles from the base. Uh, about halfway uh, back, the earth started to shake. And we thought, well, it must just be a mild earthquake, so we kept going. And uh, the more we drove, the more violent the earthquake became. We determined that we probably needed to get to the base to see if there was something that we could do to help some of the people or uh, to render some assistance. It has been nearly five years since many of the U.S. military and civilian personnel stationed in Japan directly felt the effects of the devastation. For some, the experience will never go away. The fishing village itself that was right next to Masawa, the entire village was wiped out. It was basically one building was left standing, and the bottom floor of that building had been washed out. Uh, when I arrived at the commissary, I found that uh, my entire workforce was standing outside of the commissary in the parking lot. So we entered the commissary and we noticed that in the first two or three aisles, uh, all of the glass items, almost everything was on the floor. There was a lot of spillage, a lot of glass, every place. And we started to get up some of the debris. Roads, railways, electric grids, airport runways, all saw extensive damage. And the disaster created a vacuum for food and water supplies. And all of those things that, uh, that we were missing, people would come into the store and they were just buying candles, buying batteries, uh, you know, getting ready for the next, the next wave. And it was at that time that I reached out to my fellow store directors and said, hey, can you, can you, can you send me some batteries? Can you transfer me some flashlights? And to a person, every single one of them uh, reached back and, and provided that support. We arranged, for instance, with the bakery to send up baked products from Tokyo, from the Tokyo area, and they couldn't come up the main road because of the uh, contamination, so they came up the back way, brought in key essentials like bread, milk, you know, fruits and vegetables, but by doing that we were able to ensure that we received supplies. Shelter, food, even clothing were washed away, and that's when the community went to work. I think we were able to successfully uh, collect somewhere around seven tractor trailers of coats and jackets and blankets and then go out in the local communities and give them out. And even the, a group of my workers, uh, along with, uh, with me and several others, we went out uh, with some donated water, tractor trailers of donated water, donated juice, and uh, ministered and gave that to the people that were out there. Many of them had nothing. We would go into villages where there used to be houses and we found that there were no houses. It'd just be a A-frame roof is all you'd see there. And I just felt honored to be able to be at that particular place, at that particular time, and be able to make a difference with God's help. Five years later, the effort to rebuild following the earthquake, tsunami, and subsequent nuclear disaster in Fukushima are still ongoing. Reporting for the Defense Commissary Agency, I'm Tony Brazier.